very good welcome to everybody tuning in this moment in time it's such a great pleasure for me to be able to come to you right in your house in your car in your office and in wherever you may be at this moment in time it gives me joy always when we are able to connect in this medium of communication and what a wonderful thing God has given unto us that we can be able to relay his word by way of online media or by way of online preaching. I am so, so excited. My name is Pastor George Mulinge coming to you all the way from Mount Zion Worship Center in Mombasa, Kenya. And it's such a great delight for me to be able to share with you God's word. I thank God that he has given us an opportunity that we can be able to gather together with this one God to hear his voice. And as I've always said, the scripture says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. And I want, I like to put it this way, by every revealed word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So welcome to our kingdom moments. And uh, it's my pleasure to share with you the word of God. We started quite a while ago looking into this subject, the subject of Lord, teach us to pray. Yes, a desire in the hearts of Christ's disciples to learn the best way to approach the place of prayer and even the practice therein. And therefore, after bringing this to Jesus, Jesus took them to what we would call the popular sermon delivered on the mount or the sermon on the mount. And out of that sermon on the mount, is where we find where Jesus started teaching his disciples on the best way to approach this whole matter of prayer. And we've covered a considerable amount of ground from the time we began looking at the purpose for prayer and the purpose, the first time prayer is mentioned in the Bible and how it resonates with that which Jesus started speaking about prayer in the book of Matthew. And therefore, Picking up from where we left last time, we've come all the way to a point where we were discussing a segment in that very, uh, you know, portion of scripture on being delivered from the evil one. And this calls attention to Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 13. But before we focus on that particular verse, let's read the whole particular episode that we have been calling attention to. And I would like to begin from verses number 9 of Matthew 6. In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, our Lord be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Verse number 13, which is our focus today. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. We looking at the fifth part of deliver us from the evil one. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and bless you this wonderful time in moment that God you've given unto us to be able to look into your word I pray the Lord even as I begin to open my mouth to speak to your people through this medium of communication that God you will think through my mind and that God you will cause my words to flow seasoned with the salt of grace. And I pray the Lord to all my hearers that whoever will hear these words, Father God, they will find a lodging in their hearts and gravitate thereby. We thank you Father for your faithfulness to be able to accomplish that which you have sent in terms of your word. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Last, in our last uh, subject, lesson that we learned last week, we discovered something. And I would like to just uh, I sample out one or two, three things there, and then we hit the ground moving forward. As we pray, we pray that we might be delivered from the evil one. That is what we started looking at. You know, we stand in that place of prayer, desiring that we'll be delivered from the evil one. As Jesus told us to pray, it says, pray that you are not led into temptation, 
And also pray that God delivers us from the evil one. Hallelujah. So in that respect, we, re we realized the essence of actualizing this whole thing about being delivered from uh, the evil one is closely connected to our submission to God, submitting to the, to the word of God and a proper engagement with his word. Without submit, uh, submitting into his word and by properly engaging with his word, we may not be practically be delivered from the evil one because we can only enjoy this deliverance from the hand of the evil one if we walk in accordance with that which God has already commanded in Scripture. And therefore, a submission to the Word of God, we realize, we realize that God gives grace to the humble, or when we learn how to humble ourselves to God, then God will make available that grace that is needed to submit so that the enemies of our soul, those who put us into temptation, of those who deliver us to the evil one. When they find that we have sufficient grace to take us through this, we realize we are able to enjoy that deliverance. And on the other part, the Bible says God resists the proud. He resists the proud but gives more grace to the humble. And therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That is what we found in James 4, 6. And therefore, by submitting to God, we are on the road to being delivered from the evil one. And in our previous study, we also realized that this being delivered from the evil one parallels with that which we find in the book of Revelation, chapter number 3, having to do with being delivered from the hour of trial, or being kept away, or being preserved at the hour of the time of, um, of, of the time of trial. And this is a time that always will be with us. And in the end, in the tail end, it will be with us at the judgment seat of Christ, when every man's work shall be made manifest and tried in the presence of God. Praise be to God. So, by a submission to the Word of God, or by practicing how to submit ourselves to the Word of God, and properly engaging therein, we realize that brings by itself such a freedom at the hour of trial, or when the evil one comes in, and God uses that which he has done in our lives to bring about this deliverance. So our submission to God's word is actually an act of humility because it requires for us putting aside self-centeredness and desire to walk in faithful obedience to that which God has already said, to humble ourselves and and, 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 you know, walk in light of that which we have learned. And again, we were able to close our last subject, our last lesson, by looking at Psalms 91. What the scripture talks about those who submit themselves to God. This is actually equal again to how we uh, to, 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 to how we submit or how we hide ourselves in God. In other words, hiding in God or submitting in God is another way that is graphically reflected in, uh, in, in, in Psalms 91. And I'll read that and then we'll move on to today. He who dwells or he who remains as a continual practice in the secret place, in other words, in the sense of a place of protection of the most high, the Bible says, shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, they shall find defense. I will say of the Lord, that is verse number two, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. Surely, and this is where we, <laughs> we focus on our subject matter. Surely, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence, he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Listen to that. Hiding under the wings of the Most High, and also hiding the place of his shadow, ensures 
that we enjoy deliverance from the end of the evil one. If only we can discover the secret of walking with God and walking in faithful obedience to that which he has already commanded in his word, we will in extens- uh, by, by, by extent be able to understand the exact blessing that comes by way of walking in that obedience. And therefore today, moving forward, I would like to carry that thought and probably we'll finish this today. Hallelujah. Let's look at an example or at a prayer that Jesus prayed for his disciples then and for us today. <laughs> look at that. He prayed for his disciples at that time and by extension spread out or extended that prayer to us. And I want to thank God that we are, as we walk in faithful obedience to God's word, we are covered in this prayer cover. This wonderful prayer cover that has actually as, as, that has actually brought us into, you know, into the face of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. I would like to sample out a few scriptures from Psalms 91 and see what, I'm uh, sorry, from, um, uh, from John 17, the prayer that Jesus prayed to his disciples. Let me just read a couple of them and then we will be able to look at a couple of things there. That's number one. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. Hallelujah. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to them, to the man whom you, you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Now listen to this now. I pray for them, and that's why I said to the Lord, prayed for them. I prayed for them and prayed to us by extension. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. He doesn't pray for the world, but he prays only for those whom God gave him. And those whom God gave him are you and me and his disciples. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept them, and none of them is lost, except the son of perdition, that the scripture must be, must be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, but they may have, that they may have joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the word, and the world has hated them because they um, are not of this, the world. Just as I am not of the world, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Yes, this is the same thing we find in the prayer that is in focus. Deliver us from the evil one. And then the next segment of the prayer, he said, They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. 
your word is truth. Now, having looked at that prayer, of course, we can read through the entire prayer, but I just wanted us to focus on that particular part, which the Lord talk, took upon himself to pray for his disciples, that they may be kept at the time or at the hour of trial or from the evil one. I think that's really very important. So he's not telling us to do, or he's not telling his disciples to do something that he has not done for them. And of course, we have seen in that explanation of that prayer that he, is, he, he Jesus himself, talked about being in a world that has all these evils. And therefore, even though he was in the world and by extension, even though we could be in the world, just as he was and as we are, we are not of this world. That should be a truth that will sink in us. But in this world, it must be clearly understood that we have an enemy, an enemy and the enemy of our souls. That's why Jesus prayed. Now, the whole prayer let me put it this way of John 17. It's something that I would like to encourage you to go back and study. Hallelujah. But let's concentrate on a few things or a few factors from that very prayer. Hallelujah. There is that statement that we find Christ saying that I do not pray for this alone. At that time when he was standing with the disciples making that prayer, of course, his, direct, his hand and his focus was basically on them. But he said that I am not only praying for this alone, but also for those who will believe in me through your word. And therefore, you and me are a product of those who have believed in Christ through his word. We have never seen him. We have never been with him, but we believe his word. We feel his presence in us because the word of God has been assimilated, has been put into or has been written into our hearts. That's why we have him in our hearts. But ideally, we have never been with him physically. And therefore, that prayer resonates with us that he prayed even for us who would in the future believe in his word. Thank God that we have the coverage of the prayer of Jesus in our lives. Hallelujah. And therefore, we will see that the overall focus of this prayer is actually looked or uh, uh, geared towards a time yet future. The age to come, that period of the kingdom time. And that's why he says, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you gave me. He desires that they may be with him in the place of glory, that they may enjoy the glory together. And this is really very important as we begin to think about this deliverance from the evil one. It's not only about being delivered from the hand of the evil one and enjoy some passing pleasures or enjoying some victory for today. It's also imperative to realize that this deliverance from the hand of the evil one extends our joy to the point of enjoying Christ's glory together with him in that coming kingdom. And therefore, that's why you and me move by faith, walk by faith, and do everything that is within our power to ensure that we are delivered from the hand of the evil one. Hallelujah. So that in that day, we may be with him. Remember what he said in John 14 too? He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare that place for you, I will come back again and receive you to myself. That where I am, you may be there also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. This is... This is exciting, ladies and gentlemen. And this is a prayer and the words of the Lord Jesus Christ that one day after we have been protected from the hand of the evil one, as we see in that template of prayer, 
Lord, deliver us from the evil one. As we are delivered on a regular basis to that salvation that we found is a salvation that comes at the last time. Oh my God, Christ desires that we enjoy with him the glories of his Father. Hallelujah. Being in those mansions where he went to prepare that we may be together with him there. That should be one of the focus or the main focus even in this work of faith. As you find yourself being troubled by the evil one, I want you to, rem to, re I want you to remember that by hiding under the shadow of the Almighty, by learning the secret of submitting yourself to God, then you are inviting constant deliverance from the hand of the evil one. Remember the scripture says, we know that we have God, but the whole world is under the sway of the evil one. That is 1 John 1.19. The enemy and the God of this world does everything practically possible to ensure that we are under his grip, that we are ensnared in his trap, and then to the end that we will not enjoy the glory that Christ enjoys or will enjoy with his, uh, with, with his Father God. And therefore, when we see the desire of Christ in his heart is that we may participate in that joy of being in that covering of that glory that he is or that he has had with the Father from the beginning, I think it's imperative that we pray that we be delivered from the evil one. And that's all that segment of deliverance from the evil one is all about. That's why Jesus prayed uh, passionately. He also prayed that they be sanctified by the truth, which is the word of God. And again, this text again, uh, it takes us back to that point, submitting to God has to do with a proper engagement with the word of God. If we only believe in some facets of scripture and not properly engaging the word of, with, the, with the proper word of God, then we'll have a problem. We will fall prey of the evil one. And I remember last Wednesday I talked to you and gave you the example of the Lord Jesus Christ in the hour of trial, in that particular time of temptation, in the hands of the evil one. And in Matthew chapter number four, Christ would always, you know, respond that it's written, it is written, it is written, it's written. And as the enemy kept on tormenting him, going back and forth and coming back and forth, finally, the enemy got tired of the Lord Jesus because the Bible says he did this for a time and left. Let me tell you something. If you properly engage with the word of God and walk in submission, the grip of the enemy will not stay. The enemy will only try to terrorize you for some time, but he will leave because the presence of God is stronger than the power of the evil one. Praise be to God. And therefore, this is really very important for us to look into and to be able to understand. As I finish this thought, I want to bring in that part in John 17, 14 to 15. This is what the scripture says as I remind you. Something to notice here. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. That has been my goal. God doesn't want you to be out of this world before your time. But Jesus prayed that you be kept from the evil one while you are here. Praise the name of Jesus. And this is really very important for us. And therefore, we need to pray that God continues to work in us. Then the second thing that I would like us to look into tonight is, or this particular time, is that we do not have to give access to the enemy. If we don't give access to the enemy, then we will be protected at the time or from the hand of the evil one. Remember the first point has been that Jesus has already prayed for us. So we enjoy a prayer cover. We enjoy a prayer 
you know, a pristine covering of the Lord's prayer that he prayed for us at the moment of attack, of the moment that the evil one manifests uh, on our side. We should always realize that when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the scripture says God will lift up a standard against him. So at the time of trial, the time of your test, when the end of the evil one is manifested, please understand God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Hallelujah. Even when you go through the shadow of death or through the valley of the shadow of death, you shouldn't fear any evil because God will also always be with you. And then focusing on this second thing, don't give access to the enemy. We don't give a, a, any access to the enemy if we will be delivered from the evil one. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And this takes me to a scripture in John 14, 30. The Bible says, I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world coming, but he has nothing in me. Now that is talking about Jesus. For the Lord Jesus Christ to stand in that ability to be able to pray a prevailing prayer for us is because the enemy has nothing to do with him. Praise the name of Jesus. He recognizes Satan as a ruler of this world, but they are not equal. The ruler of this world has nothing with him because Christ is not of the nature of this world. He is God incarnate when he first manifested himself here on earth. And when he went back to God, the Bible says he was received in glory. And therefore, in his continued ministry to pray for us, it must be understood that that prayer that he prayed for us is so powerful because the enemy has nothing to do with our Lord, our chief intercessor. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And therefore, it's good for us to realize that we can hide ourselves in God. And by hiding in God, submitting ourselves to God, and by properly engaging ourselves with the word of God, we find safety. Remember the scripture says in Psalms 46, verse number 1, that God is our refuge and our very present help at the time of trouble. He is our strength. Uh, your refuge and strength and a very present help at the time of the hand of the evil one manifested in our lives. So our only place of safety is in God. And God knows that there are times that we lack strength. He knows that there are times that we are not able to practically fight a battle by ourselves. But by allowing him to fight the battle on our behalf, then we are assured of victory at the time of the manifestation of the hand of the evil one in our lives. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the hand of the evil one will always show up when you have committed yourself to work with God. Do not be deceived. It started with Adam and Eve in the garden. When the enemy saw that the Adam and Eve were enjoying that pristine covering of glory in the garden, and they were walking in obedience with the word of God, the enemy of their souls crept in and tried to put them into a point of deception. And therefore, you too and me as well, as we walk in this journey of faith, faithfully obeying God, I want you to know that the enemy of our souls who always would want to manifest himself in a way that would completely derail us from the vision. And therefore, it's imperative that we understand that the evil one will not sit there and enjoy when we are taking our walk of faith with God. No, he will not sit there and enjoy when he sees you moving from victory upon victory. No, it will not work. There will be attempts, there will be the works of the evil one being leveled against you. And therefore, it's important for us to understand that we don't give him access into our lives. We seal every loophole, every space he can penetrate and damage our relationship and bring ruins and chaos in our lives. 
Hallelujah. We don't just sit there and say, oh, you know what? Jesus prayed for me. Oh, you know what? I'll be delivered from evil. No, you do your part. You do your part. Praise the name of the Lord. Walk in faithful obedience into the word of what God said. Romans 6, verse number 10. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives it for God. Likewise, you also Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign over you. You've got to do something about it if you'll be delivered from the hand of the evil one. The Bible says, verse number 12, therefore do not let, it's your responsibility, do not let sin reign in your moral body, that you should obey it in its last and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Please listen to this and listen carefully. You have your part, and your part is to do everything possible and properly, by properly engaging with the word of God and submitting to God. This is really very, very important. Please, let's ensure that we don't give a place to the enemy. That's what uh, uh, Paul is telling us in this portion of scripture in Romans chapter number 6, 10 to 14. That we don't allow sin to have dominion over us because if sin... Uh, you know, uh, is allowed to have dominion over us, then in the hour of trial, when the evil one shows up, we'll not be able to fight the battle and be able to, uh, to you know, to, to, to successfully get out of it. But this is what the scripture says. You know, we are encouraged by the word of God. We live by the word of God. Hallelujah. The word of God, I always say, it is our focus. It is our foundation. It is our ground. It is the word of God that teaches us how to submit to God. It is the word of God that helps us to keep protected from the hand of the evil one. Romans 8, 1, 4. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life, Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that it was through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the light of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Very profound. Walking the flesh and opening a door to the evil one. Walking in the spirit and allowing God's presence and God's protection to go along with you. Very, very important. Second Peter 1.9 For he who lacks these things is short-sighted. If you don't walk in the spirit, if you don't see that walking in the flesh will land you into a place of destruction. And if you don't realize by walking in the spirit, you walk in freedom and you walk protected from the hand of the evil one, then the scripture says you are short-sighted. <laughs> this is really, really interesting. Even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Brothers and sisters, we are to be vigilant. We are to know that we don't give access to the evil one. Very important. Praise the name of the Lord. And praise be to God that through Christ who has set us free from the bondage of sin and sin has no longer got any dominion over us. Praise be to God. But we also be aware that the original ruler of this world and the angels who fell with him are supernatural beings. Angels are supernatural beings. Even demons and you know powers of darkness and who are their abilities and powers are beyond that which we could ever begin to even think about. Those demonic authorities, powerful you know strongholds of the enemy, they have powers because you know. Man is still created a little lower than the angels. But by submitting to God, 
even those powers that seemingly are so great and cannot be shaken, let me tell you, they will shake, they will bow because of the power of God in our lives. The power of God works on our behalf. Praise the name of Jesus. Then the last thing is our warfare. We must understand that we must wage war. We must fight to the end. You and me must be willing to fight it out. You know, it's not just not giving an access or refusing to give an access. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, it's a battle. It's a warfare. It's something that you and me must do. And because it's a battle, then we ought to understand in this battle, we don't, find that we don't fight it the way we want. We fight in accordance with that which is already provided. And we see, for us to be delivered from the hand of the evil one, we, f- we are to depend on God and the power of his might. Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. We are to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. And if we are going to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, submitting to God must be key in our lives. You know, and by submitting to God, how are we, are we, are we saying it's faithful obedience to that which he has said? And part of what he has said, he says, wives, submit to your own husbands. That is one of the ways on how we submit to God. Those are some profound words that have come out from the scriptures, you know. And the Bible commands us to submit to God by husbands loving your wives. When the scripture commands us to love our wives, we are to submit to the word of God regardless of what we are feeling. And then it also commands the children. Children, obey your parents. That is God's command. And by submitting to God and properly engaging the word of God as he has given it, that ensures that we are kept away from the evil one. And it also says to the born servants, born servants, be obedient to those who are your masters for the same purpose. Oh, hallelujah. For this, that particular same purpose, the born servant, those who are employed, if you are working for somebody, if you are under a certain authority, the scripture tells us if you are going to be free from the hand of the evil one, oh, my friend, you are to obey those who have employed you or those who are over you. So you look at that scripture in James 4, 7. It gives us categories on how we are to submit to God. And if we do so, ladies and gentlemen, we will find ourselves in safety. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you and bless you for this wonderful time. You have taught us for us to be delivered from the hand of the evil one. We need to submit to God. And when we submit to God, We will need to do everything within our power. But the joy is that Christ, you already prayed for us that we be protected during the time of attack. And we thank you, the Lord Jesus Christ, that you did not also pray for us that time. You did only uh, did, you did not only pray for us that time, you continue praying for us, interceding for us, that we may win this battle. We want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for having with us in mind even before time. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Lord, our responsibility is to ensure that we don't give any access to the evil one. Lord, bring us an understanding. Through your word, open our minds that God, we may understand that we are engaged in a spiritual battle and fighting spiritually embodied persons that we cannot be able to see who are mightier than ourselves and our only refuge is by engaging properly with the word of God and submitting to God in the manner that God you have told us to. I pray for husbands. I pray for wives. I pray for children. I pray for born servants as we find in James chapter number four. The Lord will all submit to your wife, uh, to, to, to your word that God we may end uh, we, we may enjoy the protection that comes from God Father we thank you and we praise you hallelujah 
We thank you, Father. Maybe as we come to the end of our podcast, you are saying, Pastor, I realize I've not been submitting to the word of God. And if you can pray for me tonight, I'll be so happy. Yes, it's possible to pray together that you'll be delivered from the hand of the evil one. Jesus prayed for it. Some of you may be under an attack, perpetual attack, because you look at your life. You have not been faithful to the word of God. You've not been submitting to God in accordance with how God has provided in the scripture. And therefore, it's imperative that you repent, you turn away from your wickedness and submit yourself to God. When we submit ourselves to God, God hears our prayer. He forgives us and heals us. Therefore, let me pray with you. Father, I pray for this beloved Christian, for this wonderful brother, sister. Lord, they realize the continued attacks, not being protected from the evil one. Lord, I pray that as they evaluate themselves and see the place where they have given a foothold to the enemy and turn away from their error, their wickedness and come back to God, the Lord, they will receive the protection. They will enjoy that being kept kept away from the evil one in accordance with your word. We love you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your hand be made manifest in their lives. And maybe you are here, you're saying, Pastor, I've never been saved. We will pray for you. Just say, Lord Jesus Christ, I surrender myself that you may save me and change my life. I want to be submitted to God. I want to follow God all the days of my life. Save me now. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Thank you. I am saved. You have just been saved. May the Lord help you walk wisely in this journey of faith. And thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Before we go, we normally give our offerings and respond to God by way of saying thank you through our tithes and our offerings. When we want to walk in freedom so that the enemy does not continue suppressing us in the area of finances, we obey God through our tithes and through our offerings. When we give our tithes and our offerings during the time of trial, when finances are not readily available, God will ensure that you are provided for and all your needs are met because God has a way of opening doors and blessing you. So take action. Be faithful. If you have not been tithing, begin to tithe because therein is your deliverance. If you have not been giving an offering, you've just been hearing the word of God and you do nothing about it, take a step and say, God, forgive me. From today, I'll begin to give my offering so that I may be delivered from this financial problem. And God is faithful. Let us pray even as we get into this. And there is a pay bill number on the screen that you can be able to use so that you can be able to send your offerings. If you want to write a check, if you want to do through, uh, to give you uh, through any other media, the, we have our email number, we have numbers there which you can keep contact with us and we will help you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you as we come to the end of our podcast. We pray the Lord that every hearer that text tape and gives in accordance to how, Lord, you have worked in their heart, that, God, they will find freedom from the hand of the evil one in the area of their finances. God, may you give them a harvest, a harvest they have never seen before. May your word be a reality in accordance to what you have said, O oh Lord. We thank you, Father, and we bless you. Let there be healing of finances, healing in that which you have given unto us. May be a protection, God, in that which, God, you have put in our hands. We love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 